speed under 10 days. There is a hill in Vietnam, a nameless, uninhabited hill known only by a number, 943, 943 meters high. This is a story of the men of Alpha Company who tried to take that hill. In particular, it is the story of three men. Jim Buckner, 26, private first class, a draftee. In private life, he is manager of his father's restaurant in Derby, New York. Next one after this one. Bruce Black, the next one after 21, one. a California college dropout. He threatened to go over the hill rather than go to Vietnam. In a year, he is promoted to sergeant. I'll tell you, you can get on one of them anyway. <laughs> you definitely get on, get on one of them. J.C. Harry Charles Joseph Coons, 29, from Georgia. Married, two children. One third of his life in the army. A sergeant. A career soldier for $615 a month. J.C., the professional, Bruce Black, the college kid, and Jim Buckner, the draftee, have become friends in their four months in Vietnam. They share an equal dislike for their one-year tour of duty. Black calls it a jail sentence. The region where they are fighting is among the most remote in the world, the mountainous backbone of Indochina, virtually uninhabitable rainforest. Dok To, one district in the wilderness. It is the area of the border junction of South Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos, a sanctuary, supply base, and staging area for North Vietnamese operations into the highlands. In recent weeks, the enemy has moved in on Dok To, and the Americans are driving them out. One of the objectives is Hill 943. The fight for Hill 943 will not appear in any history of the Vietnam War. It was an insignificant, unspectacular fight, near the end of what was called the Battle of Dok To. And those of us reporters here covering the larger campaign did not notice 943 we did not witness the fighting there. There were three men who went up the hill with the soldiers. Cameraman Eric Dershmid, soundman Sepp Tama, and assistant cameraman soundman Hubert Le Campion. And they recorded what happened in the lives of a few young men in a few days. This is not a typical war story, but more something of the typical routine, the drama of daily life in the field. It is something about why the war in Vietnam is so unusual and why these men are so similar to those who have gone to war before. This is a CBS News special, Hill 943, with CBS News correspondent John Lawrence. This broadcast is brought to you by your local quality Buick dealers. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Teresa Moran. Teresa Moran, come in. Yes, Teresa here. Over. I'm approaching the Manhattan Bridge. I'd like to see you down at Pier 5, Brooklyn. We've got to get this vessel in. This is Danny Grandone, New York tug dispatcher. Okay, yeah, we're bucking that tide now, a little uh, about north of the bridge. Over. I'll be down in about six or seven minutes. Now, let's... He talks uh, about the 1968 Buick Skylark. I must depend on an automobile, especially in on emergency situations where I have to get right down to the waterfront. Dependability and performance is a very important factor for me owning a Buick. It's an excellent car. The interior, it's just fine quality. I've been parking my Buick cars down by the waterfront now. It's 20 years. Very little rust or corrosion. I've always depended on the car, and it's never, never let me down. Buick owners keep selling Buicks for us. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? The last day of November, 1967. 
Alpha Company, 3rd Battalion, 12th Infantry, 4th Division, advances on Hill 943, a half mile away. Their own artillery pounds the area around the men, as close as a hundred yards. There are 114 men in the patrol, four platoons, 16 squads. JC leads a heavy weapons squad in second platoon. A Company has been in the field for 10 days. 10 days of walking, crawling through the jungle. Eight, 10 hours a day. It has been two weeks since serious contact with the enemy. Hey, you can't pull it. It's on there. The Colonel. Battalion Commander, Jamie Hendricks. Code name, Grizzly. Grizzly recalls this mission. We're making a reconnaissance ahead of the rifle companies which are moving overland to 943. Intelligence has reported that the enemy occupies 943. And we always make it a habit of making a visual reconnaissance from the air before our elements on the ground move into it. I'm thinking about the route the entity companies are covering on the ground below me. I'm making this reconnaissance as close to treetop level as possible in order to get a better view down through the trees. Coming over Hill 943, we just made a sharp bank with a chopper. Suddenly there was uh, an explosion, and then uh, suddenly a mass of red smoke. The aircraft had been hit by a 50 caliber anti-aircraft gun. One round came in about three inches past my left foot, went up through my radio equipment, detonated a red smoke grenade I had uh, hanging on my radio. It came out through a clipboard I was riding on on top of the radio and it was metal fragments from the grenade and uh, parts of the radio that hit me in the face. That's as close as I want to come. Yes, sir. Fighter 101 0 Grizzly, over. Uh, this is Grizzly. Let's make sure we have the coordinates for the strike now where we just The wounding of Grizzly affects the attitude of Alpha Company. Suspicion becomes certainty. The enemy is up ahead on 943. JC moves his squad up.
Jim Buckner. Check the trees out, it's drop. Five to Charlie, five to Charlie, five to Bravo. About thirty meters from six. No contact with. Should be catching up soon. Hey, be back along with two of them. Sergeant Williams, another squad leader in second platoon. The worst thing about that war? The hills. <laughs> I'm those hills. The jungle. Beating your way through it. It's being sniped at. No, know where it's coming from. Shooting at shadows. Artillery going around us now, and that's hairy. You don't know when that shrapnel's coming in on you. I want a new one if I get one, an SK. What I'm looking for is a pistol, a Russian type. I don't know if I'll get it or not. Unless we find an officer up there or something. You think so? <laughs> Put you on ambush for the next 10 days straight. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? No big thing. We're all fairly new. We've got about eight months. Some got five months left to do over here. And I hope it goes faster than it is. Oh, they gone by all right, but not as fast as I want them to go. I'm looking forward to getting out of here. That's the main thing. The column moves forward again. It is one day's march to the hill. The first evidence of the enemy, bunkers. Black has thrown in a grenade. There are new men in his squad, reluctant to search the hole. Black goes down himself. The bunker is 40 feet deep, with stairways, wells, interconnecting tunnels, and an underground mess hall. JC has taken a look. It is the most elaborate bunker complex 2nd Platoon has seen. They put the cool off, man. You breathe that junk. You better wait till the smoke gets out of there. They choked on the last one. <laughs> The enemy has left behind some supplies. A barber shop, communications wire, bedding, a sardine can. The men are aware that the enemy they are chasing is not Viet Cong, but a regular unit of the North Vietnamese Army. The bamboo helmet is proof. Do what I said and shut the hell up. I swear, sir. Oh, he's getting better all of a sudden. He has high blood pressure. Like an old lady. You don't have an LP, you better come back and get a tattoo. A landing zone must be cut and blasted so that helicopters can bring in supplies. One soldier has been hit by a falling tree. What's wrong with him, Doc? What's wrong with him? Could be shot, could be. What's his pulse? 120. Was he working on the LZ? Yes, he was. 
behind the tree. Alpha Company's commander, Captain David Foy. It went behind the tree, curved back and hit him. As often as they are resupplied, the men get mail. Darn Hickman! Huh? Crazy. Crazy. Farmer. Oh. Farmer got a base there. camp job. What you do? Huh? As you got he got camp. a base camp job. He'll never be back out to the field, man. Where's Aguilar? Aguilar? Where's my mail? Oh, yeah. <laughs> got some mail. Did yeah, I get any more mail? Thank you, much. Bert got two boo mail. Where's Cornell's mail? Huh? What do you mean that's it for now? You should have had the other mail broke down. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Some of these letters, they can sure make you homesick. A letter from home for Jim Buckner. Can't wait until I get back. Next August, boy. Gonna have one big party, I hope, when I get back. Not sure miss the good times and all the people. It's funny how you sure miss it. When I was back there working, I really didn't like it that much. And working for your family. But now when you're away from it, you miss it. Home? I'm home, my wife. JC's wife writes him almost every day. Today's her birthday. That's right. <laughs> Talking about being old already, 30 years old, she's only young chick <laughs> everything's nice i'll leave out to the other parts one thousand an airstrike one thousand pound bombs to blast the hill strikes and the artillery pound the hill throughout the night. The next day, 200 yards from Hill 943, the enemy's command post is discovered. Grizzly makes a personal inspection. What did they do with these baskets? These are the devices I use to raise and lower things down to the cave. Like the old-fashioned well. That's the other one right there. That's where we started. Okay. You get a man on top of this thing? Yes, sir. They were up there looking around. I put him up there for security, you know, just to see what the area looked like. Okay, we want to destroy this ladder here. Yes, sir. Get your recon patrol ready to go. Grizzly orders his men to move out. It is two days since he was shot. This beauty is the newest baby from GMC, the truck people from General Motors. Take a good look. We're going to tear it apart just to prove a point. What a difference a name makes. GMC pickups have double headlamps. The world's greatest selections of pickup engines. V8 engines with up to 310 horsepower. 
More color combinations than you can get on a lot of cars, plus buckets and carpeting. An exclusive front coil rear leaf suspension, rugged yet comfortable. A load box with double-double steel walls. GMC gives you a lot more truck for your money, and yet there's no difference in price. Talk about it with your GMC truck dealer. GMC, the truck people from General Motors. Ladies and gentlemen, the SO advertising manager wants to get rid of the SO Tiger. Do you want to see the Tiger go? You're going to get a chance to tell us in an election between the ad manager and the Tiger. Who will win? That's up to you. We're strictly neutral. The ad manager wants to fire the S.O. Tiger. How do you feel about that? It's a funny thing you should ask. I, I think that's so unfair. Fire a tiger? Well, I think lots of people uh, know so much about him. Why should they fire him? We're asking people who they're voting for in the election. The S.O. Tiger or the ad manager who wants to fire him? I'm going to vote for the tiger. The tiger. The tiger. The tiger. The tiger. You repeat your question. Oh, the tiger. For the tiger. The tiger, all the way. I'm going to vote for the ad man. Don't let him get rid of the tiger. Alpha Company has reached the base of Hill 943. The patrol begins. A reconnaissance squad is on the point up ahead. J.C., Buckner, and Black with 2nd Platoon in the rear. 50 yards from the top, the point squad is ambushed. The word is passed down the hill. Alpha Company has taken casualties. You guys hear how bad he was hit? Did you hear anything about it? Buckner. J.C. Tell him to be real careful. One guy got hit. Be looking out real good. Hey, Jim. Black. Tell him not just to watch up in the trees, but for spider holes like that land on. Yeah. Buckner's fire team is 50 yards from the front. You think they're dug in? I think they're used. They probably left a handful behind. Snipers and then spider holes. Set him up in them trees and <coughs> spider hole. There probably ain't more than five of them at the most. They leave him back more for harassment than anything else. If they can get a couple, okay. If we go up online, they'd probably pull out. Just makes it a little harder, that's all. Are you scared? A little. A little or much? Well, when you first, when those shots first went off, you get real scared, you know? Now that you're down under cover a little bit, you start thinking about it. Calm down a little bit. But I'm glad I'm not up in the lead. Yeah. I got Rich over it on that side. Tom's over there on the banks. What would you like to be right now? Right now, I'd like to be back home. Sitting on a beach with a cold six-pack. What do you think of this war? Huh? What do you think of the war? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. It's... I don't believe that we should sit back and pull out the way everybody's talking. I think we should be here and stop it. Stop communism here. I know from some of the things I've seen, I wouldn't want anything like this to be going on in my country. So it's better to fight in somebody else's country and have everything messed up. There's a lull as Alpha Company waits for an airstrike. J.C. Makes it so bad over here, you can't even see the people you're shooting at. It's 
is they just fire at you and you just hear the sounds and that's it. You can't uh, see them good. The only time you see them really is when they're dead. That's about the best time to see them. You scared? Yeah, I'm scared. Everybody else is out here too. Any war is bad when there's death going on. War is war. I'm scared too. I'd like to be home with my wife. You know that they are... Come again? You know that they are out there waiting for you? I know they're out there, but as far as you can't see them, like the sergeant says, you, you know they're out there, but that's it. You don't know where. Guys, the guys that are just going home are scared. And no matter how many firefights you get into and get shot at, you're still just as scared as the first guy coming over here. Bruce Black. What would you like to do right now? Well, either back in bed or at home. Mostly at home, I think. I think hey, Jim, get down. I think they're going to drop this junk. Makes me nervous too, even the Air Force up there. The bombs come in, I don't like that. They very seldom make mistakes, but it's always the first time. I hope they bomb it real heavy before we have to try and take it. There's no doubt about it. We'll try and have to, we'll have to go up it today. But tomorrow we'll probably have to take it now that. We know something's up there. As long as you're over here, I don't think you'll ever get used to that bombing when they start bombing this close. That's when I really start shaking. That's what I mean. I don't like that stuff. Glad they're on our side. They hit it pretty heavy with some big stuff. These would be all right. Get ready to move. Start to move. It is decided that Alpha Company will not press the attack, but evacuate its casualties and withdraw for the night. Tomorrow they will try again to take Hill 943. Two men are wounded in the ambush. They did not see the snipers who shot them. Another man is dead. Hit in the head by fragments from a 500 pound bomb. A freak accident. One of the bombs from the airstrike exploding in the trees overhead. There's one boy, one up at Hill. He's down there talking for the one up at he's, he's just gonna go home. He just had a few days left. Joking about it, he said, well boys, this is the last hill I'll have to take. He got up there and got killed. He's married, but he just like me married just a few weeks before he come over here. I've seen a lot of boys get wounded, and uh, I've seen a lot of boys get killed too, since I've been over here. Uh, I mean, over here, there's no segregation whatsoever. I mean, the color man, white man is, is, they're all the same. I mean, you're here for one reason, that's it. And to see, see one, of your, one of your boys laying there, I mean, it really, I don't know, it really hits you real bad. And I looked at him and I had tears in my eyes right then and there. You know? When I see a dead v NVA or a VC, it don't bother me one bit. I can uh, just walk on top and walk right and keep on going. But I see a dead GI and it just tears me up.
uh, just where I am. Uh, a dead GI just tears me all to pieces. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it really gets on you. I mean, you really start thinking about it when crying. Hell, 